Hi all, starting this new series of videos from today and these videos uh, deals with orals preparation but this time for deck officers who are appearing for chief mates examination. This is part one in the series and I hope to put up more videos in the future provided you like these videos and these videos are useful for your preparation and for your learning. If you don't like these videos and you think these videos are useless, please let me know as well then I'll stop making videos like these. Uh, so I look forward to your feedback. And uh, in every video, I'll try to keep it short enough to hold your interest. Otherwise, it gets very boring if I make them too long. So I'll be discussing about seven to eight or nine questions in every video. And if I make a series of these videos, we can cover a lot of these questions. All right. So feel free to use it for your own preparation. But if you don't like it, let me know as well. Uh, I'll start straight away with the first question. So the first question could be that you are joining a general cargo ship as a chief officer. And what documents would you expect to take over from the relieving mate? So you could be saying that when taking over as chief officer, you would anticipate being supplied with the following uh, the chief mate or the relieving chief mate or the relieved chief mate rather should provide you with all the ship's plans uh, which include the docking plan, the plug plan, the general arrangement plan, shell expansion plan, fire arrangement plan, CO2 plan, load density plans and the rigging plan. Uh, you should also be supplied with all the stability criteria because you will be in charge of maintaining the stability of the ship and the stability criteria should include the ship's general particulars, the dead weight scale, cross curves of stability, both KN and KG, statical stability information, tank capacities, ballast, fresh water and fuel arrangements, damage stability information together with any computer loading discharging programs. One thing I'll just point out here, which is extra, is whenever you talk about uh, being supplied with the computer loading discharge programs. Remember to take the password of the computer as well. Some of these loadicators have a special passwords. Make sure that you obtain this password. Many chief officers don't display it next to the computer because for security reasons. So make sure that you get the password. Sometimes even the masters don't know this password. All right. Uh, finally, you will also uh, obtain all relevant working certificates such as safety equipment certificate, radio certificate, load line, Certificate, life route certificate, safety ship construction certificate, DRATing exemption or DRAT certificate. Uh, what is DRAT? I will talk about it in the next slide. Um, also remember that not only you obtain these certificates, but make sure that these certificates are valid. If any surveys are due, then make sure that you know when the surveys are due and what arrangements has been made already for this survey. All right, and whether you need to prepare for this survey, how you need to prepare it, all these things should be included in your taking over. All right, then the dates of validity of the certificates would normally be noted to ensure that the survey dates are not allowed to expire. This is something I just covered right now. All cargo documentation, including the cargo plan, cargo manifest, the register of cargo handling and lifting appliances, the cargo securing manual together with mates receipts and any bills of lading should also be handed over to you. Information on any special cargoes, heavy lift cargoes, hazardous cargo parcels may have specific carriage or storage instructions to consider should be provided to you as well as well as miscellaneous documents like the logbooks, tank sounding records, crew list, plan maintenance schedule, uh, chief officer standing orders maybe extra would also be noted during such a handover period. All right, so make sure that if your vessel is carrying any kind of special cargo such as uh, maybe it could be dangerous goods, it could be heavy lifts, then uh, you are aware of the arrangements or the facilities that is provided or uh, the instructions that is provided by the port before you take over. The next question is what is the period of validity of the DRAT or the DRAT exemption certificate? The DRAT certificate is basically it indicates to the health authorities that your vessel is free from any rat infestation and that's why the certificate is called DRATing certificate. Normally uh, health inspectors come and have a look around sometimes they check your vessel uh, and the period of validity is normally six months. So this is carried out every six months. So make sure your DRATing certificate is always valid. If not then arrangements should have been made to uh, renew it before the expiry period. Question number three, you have received the cargo manifest as a chief officer prior to loading a general cargo vessel and what items in particular would you look out for as a chief officer? So in order of priority, you would be noting down any dangerous or hazardous goods. All right, because if you are carrying any dangerous or hazardous goods, then uh, you need to know not only the location of it, but you should be carrying the IMDG book uh, you may need to carry some additional medical equipment or certain maintenance equipment. Uh, you need to be aware of dangerous goods location, have the manifest of the dangerous goods. You should be having labels to uh, mark these dangerous goods. 
because this is required by law. All right, if there are any goods that require special storage or lashing and because you are on a general cargo vessel, if you do not have it, uh, then you need to arrange for such storage and lashing. It needs to be approved storage and lashing arrangements by the, it needs to be approved by the class surveyor. So you should be able to load only the cargo for which you can provide the lashing arrangements and securing and that securing arrangements should be approved by the classification society. You just cannot load any landum cargo just because you are on a general cargo vessel. All right. Then if you are carrying any heavy lift items that should be noted down in the cargo manifest as well. You should note down the weight of the cargo, how it will affect the stability, how will it be loaded, uh, whether you, and you need to sometimes because you need to stop sometimes all the cargo operations. You need to notify the department heads because sometimes the cargo can lead to heavy list, whether your crane will be loaded, the ship's crane or whether the shore crane will be loaded. Uh, what kind of lashing arrangements do you have? Where is this uh, cargo going to be discharged? Uh, so on and so forth. All right. And then whether if you have any personal effects, valuables or special cargoes, example being mail. So sometimes shipping agents or your company might send some uh, personal mails or it could be official mails. It could be cargo that uh, that is not kept on the ship, but sometimes is kept in the ship's office. And uh, what documents are these? And you should be having a list of these documents. And who are they entitled for? Who's going to come and collect this? Uh, so on and so forth. So you should be having details about that as well. Question number four is that uh, your vessel is scheduled to enter a dry dock and as a chief officer, what documentation would you prepare prior to entry the dry dock? All right. So for the dry docking, the vessel would require the following plans and documents to be readily available. You would require the dry dock plan, uh, the shell expansion plan, the general arrangement plan, the ship chief officer's repair list, the plug pan, the ship's firefighting arrangement, tank arrangements, relevant stability information, a list of the ship's general particulars, digging plan, uh, relevant certificates for required surveys, cargo plan if docking with cargo on board. Uh, normally this is avoided, but some ships do dock with cargo. It's not uh, something to be unheard of. And if your ship is a tanker, then you would also require a grass free certificate prior to entry into the dry dock. All right. So many of these plans are also displayed in the ship's alleyways. Uh, but you need to have uh, these plans so that you can exchange the information with the dry dock inspector. So once you enter the dry dock, the dry dock inspector will come on board. He will have a meeting with you as a chief officer. The master is involved as well. And you need to show them or show him the plans or him or her the plans, whoever the dry dock inspector is. And you guys need to discuss and uh, there will be a meeting that will be held, which will discuss uh, uh, vessels particulars regarding uh, the dry dock. And that for that, you need the plans available at hand. Question number five, what information would you expect to find on the ship's dry dock plan? Well, the dry dock plan contains uh, information uh, addition to ship's general particulars. It also contains the ship owner's details, measurements for the overall length, breadth and depth uh, with the air draft. And the main outline also shows the position of all the keel blocks from docking shores with indication of any appendages protruding from the hull. So for those of you who have never been to dry dock, you don't know what a dry dock plan is. A dry dock plan is very useful uh, for the dry dock, especially for the people at the dry dock to plan how they would place the blocks on which the ship would be able to sit without damaging any of its appendages. And also the ship would be uh, taking minimum stress during that time. So that's how they plan the position of the blocks. And uh, that's why a dry dock plan is very useful. It's only used when during a dry dock. But this plan needs to be exchanged and normally a copy is provided to the docking inspector beforehand from the shipping office. But you need to keep a copy of it as well just to exchange the information with the dry dock inspector. Question number six, what information is contained in the cargo securing manual? The cargo securing manual provides details on the number of lashings and securing points available on the, available on the vessel. The manual is respective to an individual vessel and will specify the distribution of lashings required per cargo space and specific weight load test slash safe working load applicable to lashing points, pad eyes, ring bolts and etc. So if your vessel is a vessel that is required to be cargo that needs to be lashed or needs to be secured, your vessel needs to carry a cargo securing manual without which you cannot conduct any kind of lashing because the cargo securing manual is issued only after the classification society has provided approval regarding the lashing arrangements on board your vessel. Only when they are satisfied with the lashing arrangements provided on board your vessel do they issue the cargo securing manual. Without it, 
your vessel cannot load cargo all right so uh, you need to ensure as a chief officer the location of the cargo securing manual in the past i have sailed with some chief officers who actually had no idea where the cargo securing manual is sometimes you cannot find it but you need to have it because tomorrow port state or flag state officer might come on board your ship and ask you to produce it because they want to see or ensure that the lashing arrangements in a vessel reflect the requirements of the cargo securing manual all right you cannot just do your own thing the last question for this video is that what is the register of cargo handling and lifting appliances what is kept in it and who maintains the register of cargo handling and lifting appliances and who would inspect it all right so these questions are all related to register of cargo handling and lifting appliances so this register is actually a filing system for retaining the records and certificates of all the ships lifting apparatus so the car cranes or the derricks uh, any car kind of uh, gear that is there on the ship to handle cargo that is the records for it including certificates for shackles blocks wires derricks cranes chains hooks etc the register is kept and maintained by the chief officer and is liable for inspection by the cargo surveyor when carrying out a cargo equipment survey it is also liable for inspection by the external auditor during an ism audit all right so all the lifting gear on your ship needs to be recorded in the register of cargo handling if there is any change that needs to be inspected and the record maintained there as well all right so i hope these questions were useful to you for your learning and for you to help prepare yourselves for oral examination when appearing for chief mess orals if you don't like these videos please let me know uh, i look forward to your feedback thank you for watching and thank you for subscribing keep subscribing because then you will get notification about my future videos as well bye guys i'll see you soon with my next video